in lockdown. Don't venture away from your radio. Don't go outside. Don't get infected. Welcome to Quarantine. Quarantine Radio Theater brings you new productions of old-time radio as well as new productions of original material. So, dim the lights, sit back, and close your eyes. We are in quarantine. Welcome to Quarantine Radio Theater. We are so glad for you to join us on this, our fifth episode. If this is your first episode, welcome, and please check out our previous episodes. If you are a returning listener, thank you for coming back and thank you for your support over the past episodes. We really appreciate it. If you like what you are hearing, please hit that like, follow, and subscribe button. Please also leave us a comment and let us know how we're doing. The QRT voice actors would love to hear from you and would love to hear what you think of what we're doing. Please also check out our Facebook page for any updates, meet the cast, or trailers from upcoming shows. You can also be kept informed of all the special giveaways and events that we are planning and how to enter them. Enough of the housekeeping, let's get to the show. Tonight... We are bringing you Louisa May Alcott's tale, Little Women. It originally aired in December 1949 and starred June Allison as Joe and Peter Lawford as Lori. We follow the lives of... Hi, Brant. Hey, uh, Megan. We're just about to start. I mean, shouldn't you be in places? We all should be in places. We can't find Allison. You haven't tied her up and thrown her in a closet again, have you? We all had an intervention about that. I have no... Megan, I've looked everywhere. She's not by the zombie cage. I even checked the kitchen and the garbage disposal. Guys, I didn't even... You better not have. We had an intervention. Dude, you promised. I haven't. I didn't... (sighs) Did you check the restrooms? Megan and Bill, come on. We're waiting for you. Allison came back from the restroom a while ago. Oh, (laughs) sorry. You didn't think Brant did anything, did you? Not after the intervention we had. Sorry about that, folks. We should just get right along with the show. Now sit back and enjoy as Quarantine Radio Theater presents Little Women. My little women, my four very precious little women. Sometimes I see them still as they were in those days. Dark days for us. Trying days with their father still away in some distant army camp. And yet even in those days, Christmas came again. And since I was busy at the army hospital, my little women decorated the tree for themselves. Amy, it needs another string of popcorn here. And a few more angels. I'll paint them, Joe. I think it's a beautiful Christmas tree. Well, it's nice, Beth, but... But what, Joe? Meg, Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. No. It's so dreadful to be poor. Well, I can tell you one thing. We won't always be poor. Someday I'll be a famous writer and make my fortune telling stories. And you'll all ride around and find carriages and have servants and money and dozens of dresses. I should like that. So there's no use in fretting now. Come on, let's rehearse our Christmas play. Amy, I wrote a new scene for you. It's wonderful. Oh, no. It's perfectly simple. All you have to do is shout, 
Rodrigo, Rodrigo, save me and faint. Rodrigo, Rodrigo, save me and faint. I can do that. I've planned my costume too. It's absolutely plain with all the colors of the rainbow in it. Impossible. Why? I'm a princess, am I not? You're a princess, but you don't know it. You think you're a servant girl working for Beth. I mean, Hagar the witch. A princess always knows she's a princess. Well, you don't. Look, Beth has just left the stage with her kettle full of simmering toads. You're locked in the tower. Suddenly, I enter. I'm Hugo the villain. And you cry out in horror, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, save me, and faint. Then Rodrigo, that's Meg, enters. Meg? Rodrigo? I thought Meg was Don Pedro, my father. She is, but you don't know it. Does Meg know? Of course I do. Then I want to know, too. Why shouldn't I? Because if you know who you are, the play is over. Well, it's too long anyway. Amy, please. After all, it's my play, and... And... And what? Look, you can see him through the window. That boy next door. He's watching us again. Let me see. I want to see Where? I certainly would like to know him. I'd like to know a boy for a change. Joe, that's brazen. They say in the village he's a very wild sort. He ran away from school, and they couldn't trace him anywhere. And finally, they found him in an army hospital, wounded. How perfectly splendid. I would like to do that. A fine soldier you'd make. And now he's staying with his grandfather, Mr. Lawrence. And while he's recovering, he has a tutor. I wonder how I can get to know him. <gasps> Perhaps our cat might get lost, and he might bring it back, and we might get to talking. I don't think that's very romantic. No one said anything about romance. Yoo-hoo! Hello? Joe, you're disgracing us. What will he think? He'll think I'm awful. But he did wave back. There must be some way to get to know them. They always seem to be having so much fun. Perhaps one of these days I can... Lori. Oh, hello, Brooke. At your window again. Your grandfather's not going to care much for that. After all, you're supposed to be studying. Studying? Hang it all, Brooke. It's Christmas Eve. That's no excuse. But I have a suggestion. A suggestion? Perhaps if we started your studies earlier, we might finish earlier. Then by four o'clock, you could give your undivided attention to the view. And we'll start this very moment. Look, she's out there now. That's the one I like to watch. See her? Yes, it's a strange way to spend Christmas Eve, shoveling snow off the walk. She swings that shovel just like a boy. Interesting, isn't she? Hmm, yes. But the other one is pretty. She must be the oldest, I think. You know, I've been wondering if... Look, she's seen us. She's smiling up at us. Brooke, I'm going to talk to her. Careful, Laura, your throat. I'm all right. Hello there. Hello. Isn't that hard work for a girl? That's all we have in this family. Why don't you come out and help me? Can't. I have the Quincy. Oh, what a shame. Isn't catching, though. I can have visitors. Only, I don't know anyone. You know me. Almost. Could you come over and keep me company? I'd be very happy. Brooke, you think she'll really come? I don't know. Lori, I... Marmy! Marmy! I think she'll come. I'm so glad you were able to come and visit. Let me take your coat. Thank you. Well, I've come to entertain you. 
I'll read aloud and you can listen. I do love to read aloud. I'd rather just talk, if you don't mind. Oh, no. I love to talk, too. If you'll come in here. This is the drawing room. Christopher Columbus. What richness. Why, this is a palace. It's marvelous. So roomy and so full of things. I call this splendor. I really do. It's just a room. Will you have some tea? Of course. Sugar? How many lumps? One, please. Uh, two, three? Three it is. Thank you. Well, Mr. Lawrence, now do tell me all about yourself. Of course, I know all about your school and the army. In fact, everything. But before that, what? Well, I used to live in Europe with my parents and- Europe! I'm going to Europe, you know. Really? When? Oh, I don't know exactly. You see my Aunt March? I just started to work for her as a companion, and what a fidgety, nervous soul she is, too. Well, anyway, my aunt has rheumatism, and the doctors thought baths might... Cookies? Thank you. Oh, not that she hasn't got a bath. She has a very nice one. Did you take any baths while you were there? Baths? I mean, for your rheumatism. I haven't got rheumatism. Neither have I. But you see, I figured baths wouldn't do me any harm. I mean, that is to say, well, I would... Oh, these cookies are good. Because I've always wanted to go to Europe. Not for the baths, of course. Not at all. For my writing. It's so good for writers. You see my Aunt Marge. Oh, but you don't know Aunt Marge. What were you going to say, Mr. Lawrence? Uh, Nothing. Except I'm not Mr. Lawrence. I'm Laurie. Well, Laurie then. And I'm Joe. That's short for Josephine, of course. Of course. Tell me. How are you getting along with your grandfather, Lori? Oh, fine. Once I got used to him. You know, he's... Well, he's, uh... Oh, yes. I know. I suppose we shouldn't even dare say it in front of his portrait. Hmm. He does look grim, doesn't he? I can see how his face might frighten a lot of people, but I can't imagine being afraid of him. Of course, every time I've ever seen him, he's been barking at something, but somehow... Well, I rather like him. Thank you, ma'am. Oh! Grandfather! So you think my face frightens people, young lady? Yes, sir. Frankly, I do. You understand, I don't think you mean to frighten them, but your face... You asked me, sir, and... Yes, I do think so. And I bark, do I? I have heard you bark. Yes, sir. Perhaps you don't bark all the time, but you do bark. Yes, sir. But with all that, you rather like me, do you? Yes, sir, I do. I really do, in spite of everything. And I like you. Will you have a cup of tea? Thank you, I had one. I was just going. Wait a minute. I'll walk home with you, Joe. No, no, you stay indoors, young man. But, Grandfather, I... I should be enchanted to see Miss March home myself. Shall we go, my dear? Thank you. Goodbye, Lori. Goodbye. Lori? Uh, did you come, Lori? Uh, what happened? You won't believe it, Brooke. A miracle. Yes, it was a miracle. Our home that for so many months had known only the voices of my little women now frequently echoed to men's voices, too. Mr. Lawrence was suddenly quite neighborly, and Laurie was a constant visitor. Brooke came with him, too, as a rule. It wasn't hard to see why. The way he and Meg smiled at each other made me happy, and a little sad. Young Laurie smiled at Joe the same way. But the months went by, and she gave him no encouragement. Joe was busy, you see. She was writing. And yet, tis whispered that when the gondolas glide through the fatal waters, these same waters still run crimson with the blood of Lady Viella and her gallant lover, slain by the phantom hand <laughs> The end. 
Joe? Yes, Beth. Come in. You're crying. What's the matter? My story. Oh, poor Joe. Is it that bad? It's wonderful. Oh, well, Lori's waiting for you downstairs. Oh, Bilge. I told him not to bother me. He says he's going to wait until you come down. Let him. I wish he'd realize I haven't time for his nonsense. But he's waiting, Joe. What'll I tell him? Tell him I went up in smoke. You aren't really, are you? <laughs> no, my darling. But I am simply not coming down. And the sooner Mr. Lawrence understands that... Joe, Beth. Make, what is it? Oh, it's dreadful, Joe. A telegram from the army. Father. He's in the hospital in Washington. Marmy's leaving at once. You'd better come down. There. I think I'm all packed now. Mr. Brooke, if you'll carry my suitcase out. I'll be glad to, Mrs. March. I do wish Joe would come back. She's been gone since... That must be Joe. She always slams the door. Joe, is that... is that you? We're here in the... Nonsense! Can't you see it's not Joe? Aunt March! Well, where's that bad-tempered daughter of yours? I thought she was with you. Well, she isn't. Here, take this envelope. You'll need more than you asked for. There'll be other expenses besides your train fare. Thank you, Aunt March. But why didn't Joe bring it? Because we had words, that's why. As always, she was rude and impolite. She ran out before I could... Marmy! There she is. In here, Joe. Oh, I've been running, so I... Aunt March. Yes, miss. I had to get dressed and ride all the way over here just because you were so obstinate. But Aunt March... I'm not interested in explanations. Good day. Joe, where have you been? Yes, we were worried. Well, Aunt March croaked, as she always does, and I lost my temper. So I decided to get some money on my own. Here, Marmy, this will pay for your fare. Thirty dollars? Where did you get it? I didn't beg, borrow, or steal. I only sold what belonged to me. What? Well, if I take my bonnet off... Your hair, your beautiful hair. Oh, my Joe. Your beautiful, beautiful hair. Now, don't wail, Beth. It doesn't affect the fate of the nation. Really, I like it short. Christopher Columbus, you look like a porcupine. Really? I feel deliciously light and cool. But, Joe... Lori, dear, her hair will grow back, and it'll be as lovely as ever. But, Lori, she'll never be more beautiful than she is now. Mrs. March, you'd better come along. Mr. Lawrence has the carriage outside. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Amy, Beth, Joe, take care of things. Goodbye, my darlings. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marmy. Goodbye, Marmy. Goodbye. Don't cry, Joe. <laughs> father will be all right. I'm not crying for father, Beth. What then? <laughs> my hair. <laughs> Dear gallant Joe, the bravest of my little women, the one who loved us most, dear Joe who could dream a thousand new stories and never see the ending of our own, I was sitting in my room that day. Your father had been home for a week, and at last I'd gotten back to my sewing. She burst into the room like a hurricane, and when I looked up, startled, Marmy, do something. Go downstairs quick. Brooke is kissing Meg. And Marmy, she likes it. Joe? Joe? Oh, yes, Lori. I saw you leave the wedding and come outside. I, I thought perhaps you wouldn't mind if I came out, too. No, I don't mind. Don't feel badly, Joe. Even if Meg is married... You know, you've still got me. Of course, I'm not good for much. But I'll stand by you all the days of my life. I know you will. 
You don't know what a comfort you are to me, Lori. Joe, will you listen to what I want to tell you? No, no, Lori, don't say it, don't. I will. You must hear me. It's no use, Joe. We've got to have it out, and the sooner the better. All right. Say what you like, then. I'll listen. I've loved you ever since I've known you, Joe. Couldn't help it. I've tried to show you, but you wouldn't let me. Now I'm going to make you hear, and give me an answer. Lori, Lori, I wanted to save you this. I never wanted you to care for me so. I know I'm not half good enough for you, Joe, but, well, if you love me, you can make me anything you like. I wouldn't change you, Lori. I wouldn't change you at all. Then, Joe, please. Oh, Lori, I'm so sorry, so desperately sorry, but I can't say I love you when I don't. Really and truly, Joe? Really and truly, Lori. I don't think I'll ever marry. Oh, yes, you will. I know you will. You'll meet some good-for-nothing, no-account fool, and you'll fall in love, and you'll work and live and die for him. I know you will because it's just your way, and I'll have to stand by and see it. Well, I'll be hanged if I do. Lori, where are you going? To the devil! Lori didn't go to the devil. He went to Europe instead. And when Aunt March went over the following month, my Jill was faced with her first great problem. Whether to go to Europe with Aunt March or to go to New York as I had promised her, to live and work and write in her spare time, she chose New York. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped my book. I, I'm the new governess. I'm Josephine March. Do you live here too? Yeah. Uh, my name is Friedrich Baer. Uh, uh, they call me Professor. I, I too teach. How splendid. But of course that isn't all I do. I'm really a writer. A professional one. So? Oh, yes. But I do wish you hadn't stopped playing. It was so beautiful. What is it? It is a song, really. The words are by Gotha. Never die, sein should ken. Uh, do you understand German? No, I don't. Oh, then I will try to say them for you in English. Let me see now. Uh, Never die, sein should ken. Only who knows what longing is. Weiß was ich leid? can know what I suffer. I lie alone and parted far from joy and gladness. My senses fail, a burning fire devours me. My senses fail, a burning fire devours me. Oh, if only I could write something like that. Something that would set other hearts on fire. You truly like to write then. Oh, yes. Writing is my life. I've scribbled ever since I was a child. Some of my stories have been published, and I just sold another to the Weekly Volcano. The Weekly Volcano? You must forgive my ignorance, but uh, what is that? Why, it's a magazine, of course. Oh, you see, one can always learn. Yes, indeed. That's why I came to New York, to see and hear and learn then perhaps we can be of help to each other. I mean, well, uh, since we are both to be living here anyway, uh, perhaps you can teach me about magazines and I can teach you about music, yes? Oh, yes. I think that would be wonderful. Marmy, you have no idea how exciting these months have been. Of course, Amy is learning a good deal in Europe, but I doubt if she's had such a teacher as I have. Professor Baird continues to be ever so kind. 
One week he takes me to the theater, and another to the opera, and it's all so wonderful. Sometimes I feel I've known him all my life, when it really hasn't been quite a year. Of course, that's because we talk so much. At least I talk. I'm sure that by now he knows every one of you through me. Meg, and Amy, and Beth, and you and Father, and even Lori. Only he's always so quiet when I talk of Lori. But I am running out of things to tell him, so you had better send me some news. Your letter says that Beth isn't well. I'm sure it will prove nothing serious. Be sure to keep me informed about her. Write me often. I miss you so much. With all I have here, I miss you dreadfully. Um, Miss uh, Josephine. Yes, Professor Bear. May I come in? I want to talk to you. Um, I read your latest story in the volcano as I promised. Did you like it? Miss Josephine, I must be honest with you. I was disappointed. Oh. Why do you write such artificial characters, such contrived plots? The Duke's vengeance? Villains? Murderers? Fainting women? (laughs) Oh, Miss Josephine, please, I I am so sorry. I did not want to hurt you. (laughs) It isn't you. It has nothing to do with you. I had a letter. (laughs) Oh, you have had bad news, and and then a stupid professor comes blundering in and makes things worse. No, I want the truth. If I can't stand the truth, I'm not worth anything. Please. Well, first I say to myself, maybe I have no right to speak. But then I say, maybe I have no right to be silent because she has talent. You really think so? Oh, otherwise I would not say it. You know that. And I say to you, even sweep mud in the street before you are false to that talent. Only say to yourself, I will never write one single line which I have not felt first in my own heart. You will do that, my friend. Uh, I'll try. You will write about the simple, beautiful things you know? The things I know. The things I've seen all my life. I'm going home. Home? You are leaving us? That's why I was crying. It was in the letter. My family needs me. Beth is sick. Beth was very sick. We lost her the week after Joe came home. Those were sad, dark months for me. My heart was heavy for the one who had gone, and heavier still for the one who remained. My Joe was so changed, so quiet now. Day after day she closed her door on us, and I could hear the scratching of her pen as she wrote. It was as though she lived only for her work, nothing else. Even when I told her the news from Europe. Oh, but Marmy... That's wonderful. Lori and Amy, why, they were meant for each other. Really, I couldn't be happier. And a few months from now when they come back as man and wife? Joe, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Oh, I know what you're thinking. But you're wrong, Marmy. All that matters now is my writing. In fact, I'm off to the post office this very moment. The post office? To mail my novel. It's finished. I'm sending it off. You can read it when it comes back. I'm sending it to Professor Bear. Professor Bear? Why? Because I promised him. Look simply wonderful. Europe and marriage both agreed with you, I think. Now, tell me all about... Here you are, Joe, dear. There's something for you. How nice. Thank you, Lori. Oh, it isn't from me. Then what... Open it, Joe. Just don't look at it. I can't imagine. 
Why, it's a book. My Beth by Josephine March. Joe, it's your book. They published it. How wonderful. Published. Lori, who left this with you? Uh, a man. He had sort of an accent. He... Where is he? He wouldn't come in. He went away. Oh, no. He couldn't have. He couldn't have. Joe, where are you going? Joe! Professor Bear! Professor Bear, wait! I don't understand. You were going away without even seeing me? I, I, I did not want to intrude. Uh, you have guests. Just my family, and they want to meet you. Oh, please. I, I think... Uh... You see, we're having a sort of party. My sister Amy just got back from Europe. She's married to that boy I told you about, and... To... to that lorry. Yes, that's the one. So you see... But but I always thought that you and he... You couldn't have. I told you. Yeah, yeah yes, you, you, you told me. It's the first time we've all been together in ages, so you must come in and... Please, please, just a minute before... That is... I have something to say to you. I mean... For you, uh, oh, I have no right to think you will, but dare I hope that you and I, I know I should not ask, you are so young, so lovely, so alive, and I have so little to give you, nothing but my heart, which is so full, and these empty hands. They won't be empty if I put my hands in them. Oh, Josephine. Josephine. Shall we go join our family? You have been listening to Quarantine Radio Theater's production of Little Women, originally produced in December 1949 and starring June Allison as Joe and Peter Lawford as Laurie. Tonight... You have been listening to the vocal talents of Allison Beach as Joe, Brian Kapler as Lori, Sean Chevalier Kelman as Marmy, Megan Kolosaiki as Amy, Emily Schneider as Beth, Sherry Hawkins as Meg, Kelly Hoagland as Brooke, Andrew Richards as Mr. Lawrence, Megan Knoll as Aunt March, and Brant McCants as Professor Bear. Quarantine Radio Theater is a collaborative effort uniting talented individuals from their homes and using whatever recording means handy to try to bring you, the listener, a bit of entertainment during these uncertain times. We have several shows in the works right now, so in order to keep track of those, you can start by going to our Facebook page and following us there and then that would be able to keep you on top of all of the things we've got going on and also you can go to our youtube channel and hit the subscribe button hit that notification bell and it will let you know when our new videos come up you can also search your favorite podcast channel for quarantine radio theater and hit the follow button there as well and leave us a comment let us know how we're doing the folks here at Quarantine Radio Theater would love to know what you think of what we're doing and, and how we're doing it and just any kind of general comment that you have for us. On behalf of everyone here on Quarantine Radio Theater, I'm Brant McCants saying to you, please stay safe and be kind to one another. <laughs>